question's popped up several times recently in my circle of friends about the uh, desirability of receiver pre-selectors and their desirability, particularly with reference to software-defined radio, SDR. And I figured that probably the most effective thing to do would be to make a video demonstrating uh, a pre-selector in use. So uh, what I'm going to do uh, in a moment is demonstrate uh, my H-E-R-O-S pre-selector cat. And the reason I spell it is because uh, for quite some time I've been pronouncing it Heros. However, of course, the uh, inventor and um, maker of the pre-selector, Juan, uh, is Spanish. And so uh, I actually dispatched uh, an email to his good wife Elizabeth and asked her uh, exactly how they pronounce the, uh, the pre-selector and in fact uh, they pronounce it Heroes. So the, to put that one to bed once and for all it is the Heroes SCR pre-selector cat. Without further ado let's move from my ugly face across to the computer screen where I can demonstrate the unit in question in operation. Okay, so right about now you're asking yourself, well, why on earth would I want a pre-selector when I've got uh, a radio like the Flex which has such superb selectivity? Well, here's the reason. Yes, the Flex is a superb radio, but it is an SDR. And although Flex Radio have put bandpass filters uh, on the amateur bands, to uh, Im improve the uh, out-of-band uh, rejection. Inevitably there are going to be images from strong broadcast stations uh, in uh, MF and LF. And so here we have an example. I'm in the hours of darkness and uh, this is uh, 10 meters. 10 meters is not open here. As you can hear behind me in the background I, I've honed in on uh, an AM broadcast station but you notice there's also some kind of data signal that's adjacent. Well, what I'm going to do now is switch the pre-selector in to show the difference between what it's like without the additional pre-selection. instantaneously we see an enormous difference. The data signal has disappeared, the AM signal has disappeared, uh, just leaving a, um, a small carrier underneath which I believe is actually a, a separate bird altogether. And the noise floor has also dropped somewhat. So if I switch it back on again you see how the noise floor changes and if you're interested in weak signal communications like JT65 etc then uh, every DB counts of course uh, once more turn it off and you can see what an enormous difference it makes if I go to 6 meters Oh, look what we have here. Yet more AM broadcast stations and carriers which you can see have some kind of uh, ionospheric fading component to them. So you know that they're not indigenous to this band. I put the pre-selector on and again it all disappears and just to demonstrate one particular point just underneath six meters is the uh, baby monitor band in the UK here so here's one baby monitor as you can see the signal is about minus 71 roughly and if I switch out the pre-selector 
as you can see there is as expected a small insertion loss but the signal still remains substantially Right, now that I've woken up and had a cup of tea, I've realised that this so-called strange data signal is in fact DRM, or at least it appears to be, because it would appear to be about 10 kHz wide. So uh, let's, just out of curiosity, uh, determine just how strong and effective that, uh, that signal is. So if I switch to the mode DRM, and maybe to... Okay, that looks about centered to me. Um, let's have a look what we got here. Recent, uh, recent, recent ones. There we go. I've been there recently. Dream. Okay, let's have a look. And see what we've got. Well, wouldn't you credit it, look. The image is so strong, it's actually able to be decoded in DRM. <laughs> well, that's outstanding. Put the pre-selector in. And it's good night, Vienna. Well. Close enough. Okay, so continuing our journey through the bands, uh, let's take a look and see what we've got here. Um, it's starting to get light outside now, so of course the, some of the stronger uh, lower frequency shortwave stations uh, are uh, fading away now. But uh, it looks like we've got a bit of CW here. Oh, that looks interesting. As you can see, there are, uh, there's a, a shortwave or MF station here, which is managing to create an image. We just wait for that CW to come back. There he is. Let's switch the pre-selector on. Oh, goodness gracious me. He's not on 10 meters. Well, isn't that a surprise? Right then, upwards and onwards, as they say. Up to this point, I have intentionally avoided talking about low and medium frequency. And the reason for that was that I wanted to concentrate on the pre-selection aspect at HF. However, this device does have one other endearing feature, which is broadcast band rejection. As anyone uh, who has spent any time in radio knows, especially at the lower end of the bands, any strong broadcast band signal can itself be quite problematic, especially to amateur radio equipment. Because if you get strong signals mixing together at low frequency, then their products, intermodulation products, can find their way into eventually the pass band of your radio unless the design has been very very carefully dealt with and sometimes even then of course with software defined radio this does present another rather unique challenge in so much as that if you have a spectrum display such as here on the flex 5000 which is 192 kilohertz wide if you have any strong signals which produce an arithmetical product below 192 then potentially that can find its way as an image onto the pan adapter and of course we certainly don't want that and as you saw in the earlier part of the video 
the uh, images which do present can be quite annoying. And so what I wanted to do now is quickly demonstrate the power of the broadcast band rejection. According to the specifications it's 110 dB. In practice I'm not sure if it quite achieves that but it's certainly not far off it and it's effective. Now if I start the radio up here now as you can see the the um, pre-selector is not currently activated and if you look at these two signals here you can see they're actually modulating at exactly the same amount so obviously one of those is an image of the other and at this frequency of course there is uh, a lot of noise and uh, various signal images which the receiver is having difficulty in coping with and of course there is no filtering uh, on the uh, Flex 5000 below the amateur bands. Now what I've done is I've adjusted the spectrum display so that the strongest signals just barely breach this top line here to give a, an indication of the kind of strength, comparative strength of them. But as you can see there is a lot of noise there are many many images some are genuine signals others are images or intermodulation products so we find ourselves a particularly strong signal I should really be doing this in the hours of darkness but um, I really want to get this video completed and I can always show the broadcast band when it's peaked uh, in another video should it be so desired. So if I now engage the pre-selector the broadcast signals are gone and all we're left with are various spurs from the electronic switch mode power supplies etc stuff knocking about um, heterodynes arising in software if you like. And if I turn the uh, the loop off again, the receive loop off, disengage the pre-selector as you can see, signals very very strong. Now if you look at the signal strength here, uh, say minus 37, if I engage the pre-selector as you can see the signal disappears into the noise and uh, the, the broadcast band rejection filter works very very effectively right up to below top band of course the uh, the skirt of the rejection begins to fall away as you get much closer to the to top band to the lowest amateur band so here for example you can see that uh, here we are just a couple of hundred kilohertz below top band and the broadcast signals are starting to appear now um, however even this close to the amateur band the uh, level of uh, rejection being provided by the filter is still more than adequate to protect uh, most receivers in most circumstances but the critical feature is from about below 1400 kilohertz and particularly of course when the signals are at their strongest in the evenings the pre-selector the broadcast band rejection feature is extremely effective and that is partially the secret of success for this pre-selector I believe uh, especially in relation to software defined radio As a consequence of putting this video together, I think I've ended up with more material than I had originally intended for a single video. So I'm going to break uh, this up into uh, a couple of parts. The first video 
uh, will this one will uh, deal with the the pre-selector uh, and its uh, operation and the second video I'll uh, demonstrate the uh, use of it um, by being connected to a cat and tracking the radio and uh, also how it can be calibrated so that it tracks the radio frequency quite accurately so that's it uh, thank you very much for listening I hope that this has uh, helped uh, settle some questions in your mind uh, about uh, the effectiveness of pre-selection uh, with particular regard to uh, software defined radio um, I certainly benefit from it immensely um, I actually have uh, a friend of mine who is a ham, an amateur radio operator has uh, recently moved back home with mum and mum lives approximately 60, 60 metres across the road from me and when he is on 40 metres if the pre-selector isn't engaged then uh, despite the, the superb receiver and selectivity of the uh, of the Flex 5000, it can't cope with that kind of uh, overwhelming signal strength. The, the signals here uh, are very, very close to uh, to the AGC clipping levels uh, and sometimes beyond. Of course, no, the radio can't deal with that. And the pre-selector has made a tremendous difference in that regard. Uh, if uh, my friend is on 40 meters, then I can stay on the uh, the upper half of HF. Um, fairly safe in the knowledge that he's not going to uh, prevent me from being able to operate uh, which was the case prior to the pre-selector being put in the circuit so there we have it uh, thanks for your time uh, I hope this has been helpful and uh, will help you decide whether or not you need one of these devices this is G7 CNF signing clear <laughs>